Amen. God is good. All the time. And all the time? Thank you. All right. Good morning. I tell you what, I truly believe that, and I hope that you do too, that God is good all the time, even when things are not going our way. Sometimes things just don't go your way, do they? Sometimes that happens, but you know what? As long as God is in control, it's all good because we know that he is always going to take care of us. I'm excited today. I hope that some of you, I really hope that all of you, are excited about being here. Amen? You know, <clears throat> sometimes you go to different services and you go to different things and you see how different stuff happens and whatever, and then you wonder sometimes about your own services. Sometimes I get up here in the morning and I get ready to preach God's Word and I see a bunch of smiling faces out there. Everybody's here. They want to hear about God's Word. Sometimes I get up and I look out and everybody looks like they're very ready to take a nap. In fact, some do take a nap. I'm not going to say who, but uh, I see you from up here. Um, sometimes people do nod out. They're, they are, you know, things happen. But you know what I want us to do is I want us to always be excited about being in God's house. It's a blessing. Listen, we have a privilege to be able to come to God's house. Everybody doesn't have that privilege. All across the world, there are places where simply mentioning the name of Jesus will get you arrested or even killed. Yet we have a privilege to be able to get up and come to church. I know some of you say, but can't we do it in the afternoon? Mornings are too hard. Can't we just do it later? But listen, we have a privilege to get up and come to church and see our God move through the things that happen. We also have a privilege to serve our God. We have a privilege to serve. Listen, some people may think service is a burden. It's a burden. You know what? I've got, I got to do this and I got to do that. How about I get to do this and I get to do that? God uses me and I'm so happy about that. Service is something that I want to talk with you about today. Not only service from us, but I want to share with you that God gave us the example to follow in service. So today, go ahead and turn with me to Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to begin with verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, we'll begin with verse 5, and it says this. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. Have this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, if you're looking at the King James, the King James says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. Let this mind have this attitude. Basically, what I want us to see about that today is it is an attitude. Okay? This is an attitude. If the mind of Christ, if we need to have the mind of Christ, then that means we also have the attitude of Christ. If we have that within ourselves, then what a blessing it is. If we have all of that within ourselves, then we are able to see how God wants us to do things. The reality is we can read that passage about have this attitude. We can read that passage about let this mind be in you. We can read all that all we want, but it's a whole different thing to actually put it into action. We can look at it from a distance and say, yes, we should have the mind of Christ, but, you know, how are we going to do that? Well, 2 Corinthians, uh, verse 16, I mean, Corinthians chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, says we have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, says we have the mind of Christ. That means we already have it. It's already been given to us. We already have been filled with the mind of Christ. So if we already have it, it's already here, then it's not something that we can't find. It's not something that's not available. Listen, the attitude of Christ, the mind of Christ, we've already been given. If we know Jesus is Lord and Savior, it's already put inside of us. So if it's already put inside of us, then here's the thing. It's a choice to choose to follow that. It's a choice to look at that, to have the mind of Christ, to have the attitude of Christ. We can choose that. Many of us love to look at Jesus and say, oh, what a wonderful servant he was and how great that is, but I just don't know that I can serve like that. 
I just don't know that I can live my life with that kind of attitude, with that kind of service to others because, you know, that's hard. Well, it's hard when we don't choose to do it. It's hard when we put our own self in front of what God has already put in us. When we put the desires of our fleshly lives ahead of the, what God has already put in our minds, then it becomes a battle between the flesh and between the spirit, and it becomes hard because we allow it. It is something that we can choose. It said, um, have this attitude, have this attitude in um, Christ. Be like him, have this mind, have this attitude. It is an absolute choice. It is a choice. We can choose to do or we can choose not to do. That's up to us. You know, that's an incredible thing. Choice. Going in through the child line, the army, you walk through the line in basic training and they just go, pff, 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 and they hand you the plate. There's no choice. Whatever hits the plate, that's what you got. And you better not open your mouth and complain about it. Take it, and if you get a chance to eat it, that's even a plus. There were many times when I went through the line and they put stuff on my plate, and by the time I got the plate and turned to go sit down, my drill sergeant said, fourth platoon, your drill sergeant's leaving. That meant you better be dumping that plate and heading out the door, and you're not supposed to eat walking. But I guarantee you, everybody was going as fast as we could get something in our mouth. Didn't taste it till later, but we got it in. But it wasn't until I got off to advanced training when I found out there was a choice. <laughs> I went through the line and they're like, would you like a fried egg or scrambled eggs? I'm going, are you kidding me? There's a choice? I never knew there was a choice. I thought I just got what you gave me. The choice, oh man, that, oh wow, that's hard. Now I got to choose. Sometimes it's easier when there's no choice. Sometimes it's much easier when life is put in front of you and there's no choice. Sometimes I wish God would have just said, this is how it's going to be. And we would just do that. There would be no choice. But he made us with a free will. He made us with a choice. We can choose to serve him or we can choose not to. We can choose to have the attitude of Christ or we can choose to have the attitude of a, a, selfless, a selfish person. We can choose to do however we choose to do. It is our choice. The question for you is, what will you choose? And Today, if you choose this, does that mean you're going to choose it tomorrow? No, we make different choices every day. Every day is new choices placed in front of us. Do you know if you're laying there in the bed and that alarm clock goes off, the choices begin immediately. Do I turn off the alarm clock and get up, or do I turn it off and go back to sleep? There's a choice. It's not a choice. i got to go to work, but it's a choice. You can choose not to go. There's all kinds of reasons you can choose. There's choices. They begin and this, too, is a choice. Service is a choice. Will you have the mind of Christ? Will you absolutely have the attitude of Christ? Will you choose to do that? Now, some people will say, yeah, okay, yeah, but, you know, that's kind of hard because you're talking about Jesus here. You're saying, well, Jesus chose to serve people. Yeah, yeah, but Jesus was God. Jesus was God. It wasn't like he was a human being. Jesus was God, and so, you know, those choices were not really a choice. I mean, for him, it was, you know, he has God. So, on, on this slide says, Jesus existed in the form of God. Jesus existed in the form of God. The form of God. Okay? Jesus did exist 100% in the form of God. That is true. But I want you to hold on for a minute and think about this. In the form of God describes Jesus' pre-incarnate existence. It describes how he was before he was made incarnate into flesh. He was pre-existing in the form of God, but he also stepped into earth in the form of man. Jesus was God, 100% fully God, and he was 100% fully man when he walked on this earth. It was the form of God. It wasn't that he was only God. He was in a form. What that word in the, in the Greek means is he morphed. He transformed from God into man. So there was a transformation that happened. He transformed from God into man. Now listen, it doesn't mean that he ever stopped being God. Think about it like this. If a king takes off his kingly clothes and he puts on peasant clothes and he walks among the people, he may look like a peasant, but he never gave up being king. 
He never gave up being king. He could come among the peasants and live as a peasant but still be king. God stepped out of heaven still as God in the form of Jesus, the man, and he walked on this earth. He was still God, but he was 100% man. It was a choice. He had a choice to come. He had a choice to serve. He had a choice to live as God told him to live. He had choices every single day. He did not have to do what he did, but he chose. He chose to do that very thing. The reality is that Jesus existed in the form of man, and he also was in the form of God. He didn't cling to his deity, but he embraced his humanity. Now, scriptures, uh, the the passage, uh, I I think, actually says um, that he didn't find equality with God something to search out. He was equal with God. But what that means is he didn't hold on to his deity. He didn't stand as a human being and say, well, I still want all of the, the, the wonderful things of being God, and I don't really want all this stuff of being man. He didn't cling to that. He embraced the humanity, and he walked as a man. The, why is that really important to us? Because he understands He understands that there are hard times in this world, yet Jesus still chose to serve. Understand, Jesus still chose to serve the very people that cursed his name, spit on him, and did all of those other things, and he continued to embrace to serve them. To serve them. Now listen, I don't know about you, but if I'm trying to help somebody and they curse me out and spit on me, I'm done. Right? I'm I'm leaving. I'm through with that. I, I tried to help. You don't want the help. That, that's just my, my fleshly mind speaking. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus served to such a degree, he chose to serve to such a degree that he put aside his deity, he hung up his godly robe, so to speak, and he stepped down into earth, still God but fully man, walked on this earth as a human being. He endured all of the, the shame and the heartache and the hard times he endured also had joy, he had laughter, he had all of those things. He went through all of that, and still he chose every day to serve. He said, the Son of Man came to serve, but not to be served. He came to serve. That's why he was here. He did not cling to his deity. In his humanity, he became a bondservant. In his humanity, he became a bondservant. Now, What I want us to see is in verse 6 it says, Although he existed in the form of God, he did not regard equality with with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant. He put aside his deity, became a bondservant, became human, became a bondservant. So what's a bondservant? Notice it didn't say he became a servant. It didn't just say he became a servant. It said he became a bondservant. What is a bondservant? Well, here's the thing about a bond servant. When a bond servant, if he was a slave and he was given his freedom, then the slave could choose to stay and serve the master or he could choose to leave. It was up to him. He had freedom. And in order to choose that he would stay and serve the master, he would literally take a, they call it an owl, A-W-L, a punch, and he would nail his ear to the door showing that he was a bond servant. I'm giving myself to you. I'm indenturing myself to you. I am bonding myself with you to remain as a servant. Jesus came as God, but he emptied himself of his deity. He did not hold close to that. Instead, he walked like a man. He walked like a man, and he walked as a bond servant. He chose to serve even though he didn't have to. He chose that even though he could have walked as God and walked around this earth and no one could have had anything against him, he chose to walk as a man. He chose to serve, to become a bondservant, someone who freely gave himself in service. He chose that. It's an incredible thing to think about that he chose to be a bondservant. He didn't try to be all up here, he became empty of the, 
the deity. He was still God, but he didn't put that in the front. He put his fleshliness in the front, and he chose to empty himself and become a bondservant. Now, the whole point is he came in the likeness of men. He came in the likeness of men. He came to be a bondservant. He came to serve. He came in his humanity. And as a bondservant, he chose to serve. He made that absolute choice. We have that choice every day. Listen, we have opportunities. Probably nobody in here has ever driven off the interstate on an exit ramp that there wasn't someone standing there with a sign saying they needed something. They needed food. They needed a job. They'll do whatever. There's people always looking for something. There's opportunities to serve. Are some of them con people? Yes. And they're just out there conning you. Some of them truly need something. Probably most of us have been um, approached by someone who said they were in a certain situation. They needed some help. All we can do is seek the mind of God, and if he calls us to give, give. All of those things are opportunities to give, probably monetarily more than anything, but there are also opportunities to serve. Many times we get so wrapped up in self that we don't look for those opportunities to serve. Understand that probably within your own church there are opportunities where you could serve. You could serve someone who has a need. You could, there may be a widow in the church that needs something, uh, a board nailed down at the house or some yard work done or something. We could choose to find that and go they may not come and tell you if you don't ask we can choose to serve we can serve the people within the church we can serve the people in the community we have a food pantry that opens every thursday that's one way that we serve but you know the food that we give away um it doesn't magically appear it only comes as you give money to purchase that food so as you give on wednesday nights and goes towards that then we're able to purchase more and give more there are people that come needing help we can help there are things that we can do. There are things you can do in your, in your job. There are things that you can do in your neighborhood. There are things that you can do as a servant to help people. And here's the incredible thing. People expect the worst out of other people. They don't expect the nice things. They expect the worst. Someone breaks down on the side of the road, they never expect that someone will stop and help them because most of the time they don't. Someone has something going on in their life, they don't expect that someone's going to help them because most of the time they don't. But when someone chooses to serve and we step up and we help someone and we share with them not only the help that they give them, but also at the same time the love of God and what we do, what a difference that that makes in the lives of people. What a difference it makes. A bondservant chooses to serve even though they were free not to. Jesus was made in the likeness of man. He was made in the likeness of men, but he still made a choice to serve. He still walked on this earth, even in the likeness of men, and he made a choice to serve. How did he really make that choice? Well, he humbled himself. He humbled himself. The whole point is Jesus humbled himself. He made himself less and made them more. He humbled himself when he became obedient to God because God had given him the, the plan, what was to be done. Jesus humbled himself and followed God's plan. He could have very easily said, I'm going to do it this way. I'm, I'm going to do things just like this. I see how things are. I'm going to do it like this. We've been given God's plan. God's told us to serve people. He's told us to go and tell. He's told us to uh, reach out to other people. He's told us to take care of those in need. He's given us those instructions. But, you know, we, we're the ones in the situation. Maybe we know a little better than, than that. Maybe we can choose how we should do it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I know how people are. I'm just not going to do that. Do you really know? Have you truly humbled yourself? Have you become humble before God himself? You see, the problem with not being humble in your own self is it makes it extremely difficult to be obedient. You can't really be obedient when you think more of yourself than you should. Look at Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8. Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 8. It says, although he was a son, he learned obedience from the things which he suffered. 
He learned obedience from the things which he suffered. Jesus' humility was one of suffering. If I said today, how many of you would like to suffer more? There'd be no hands go up. Nobody wants to suffer, right? We, we want to be comfortable. We, don't, we want things to be good. We don't want any suffering. We don't want any of that coming. Listen, Jesus suffered when he was here. He suffered because even though he was God and he was serving, he was treated terribly. He was spit on. People did not like him. They wanted to kill him. In fact, they eventually did. All of that happened the whole time, and Jesus continued to serve. He suffered. He was, we call him the suffering servant. He was a suffering servant. He suffered. And the whole point is, even when it was hard and humiliating, Jesus still served. Now listen, he gave us an example. Sometimes I think the, the problem with believers in Jesus today is we don't suffer. We don't have those problems. We don't go through that. So when we do run into something hard, we don't understand how we get through it. If you talk to believers that are all over the world who have come through the, the hard times, they have been persecuted even to the point of being thrown in prison when they serve they serve with gladness. They serve with joy because they know that their God has brought them through, that they have suffered because of their conviction, because of their love of Christ, that they've suffered like Jesus as they've gone through things and they become even closer. And they want, they want to serve even more. The reality is we are a very blessed people, but listen to me. We are a people that are facing much persecution, especially right now. We are facing persecution where we can't say the name of Jesus in certain places because, no, nope, can't do that here. We're not allowed. Can't pray in school. No, nope, can't happen. Can't pray before a football game. Can't say Jesus out here. Can't do those things. Listen, that's persecution. And the enemy has done a great job of disguising it so it doesn't feel much like persecution. And so we just continue to go with it and allow it to happen and we don't step up and serve and do things in a way that we should. Listen, people don't hear about God if somebody doesn't tell them. Jesus' humility was one of suffering. He served even when it was hard and humiliating. He was humiliated in many ways, but he still continued to serve. How did he do that? He emptied himself. Jesus emptied himself. He emptied himself, he was filled by the Spirit, and he walked as a man, and he served and obeyed what God told him to do. He humbled himself by emptying himself, and as he emptied himself, he was able to do many things. Scripture says he was humble, that he was born as a child instead of a king. He was humbled in the long wait until he actually launched out into public ministry. He was humbled in weakness, in hunger, in thirst, and in tiredness, and he still endured. He was humble in his total obedience to his Father. He was humbled in choosing and submitting to the death on the cross. He was humbled in the shame, the mocking, and the public humiliation of his death. All of these things was humbling. They were humiliating, but they were humbling. Today, Christians need to remember that humility is not weakness. It's not weakness. To humble yourself is not weak. I once had a man tell me that he could never become a Christian because he was not a weak person. He said, listen, I, I mean, I, I, I respect y'all and everything, but, but I'm not a weak person. And I, I can't do that whole humility thing. And I said, well, you're confusing weakness and meekness. You're confusing humility and weakness. Those things are not the same. The reality is it's when we become humble that we become strong. Because when we humble ourselves, then we're filled with the Spirit and God can use us. We can serve. Today's Christians need to remember that humility is not weakness. We need to humble ourselves. Sometimes we think we don't have time to serve because we're so important. We have so many other things to do. But Jesus humbled himself as a man to be obedient to God. And he did that to show us exactly how we should serve God. He did it to show us exactly how we should serve God. We look around the world today and there are so many opportunities. There are so many opportunities. But did you know there are opportunities right here in your own church? There are so many opportunities right here in your own church. In fact, 
amazing how this happens. In fact, the nominating committee is about to start making phone calls. They're going to be making phone calls. They're going to be calling you up and asking you about service. Now listen, go ahead and be praying about it now. Go ahead and be asking God, how can I serve you better, God? Can I serve you better on this committee or that committee? Can I do that? Can I serve you better in this way or that? Go ahead and be asking. The problem with the reason that people don't serve is because they never consider it. And not even just in the church. I'm talking about inside the church, outside the church. They don't consider the service. They're never looking for opportunities to serve. Too many people don't take the opportunities that are given them. We're coming up on a holiday season, the Christmas season. We're coming up on that season, and we know that there'll be people in need. There'll be people that they need clothes, they need, they need food, they need ways to take care of their children during the holidays. They need all of these things. There are opportunities for us to serve our fellow man. The reality is, how do we best serve God? We serve God by serving men. We show God the love that He gives us back to Him by serving and loving the people that He created. Instead of trying to put ourselves up here, we need to humble ourselves and come to a point and understand, you know what? What if I needed that help? What if I needed someone to come and take care of me? What if I needed someone that would do that? Who would be willing? If I'm not even willing, and I know Jesus is Lord and Savior, and He set the example, He showed me how to do it. If I'm not willing, who's going to be willing? Who would be willing? God set the example to show us exactly how we should serve. Exactly how we should serve. I want you to look with me to verse 7 and 8. 7 again says, But emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Even death on a cross. Listen, too many times we don't think of that crucifixion as service. It was the ultimate service that could ever be done. Today, we, ser we can serve in many ways in our own church, but we also understand Jesus humbled himself and was obedient even to the point of death on the cross. Of death on the cross. He was obedient up to that point. It was service. Who was he serving? Listen, we've read the stories of Jesus in the garden, right? Jesus was tormented knowing what he was about to go through. He went to his father in prayer and he went to him. Even though he knew what laid before him, he knew what he had to do, he prayed and said, if possible, let this cup pass from me. If there's any way that I don't have to do this, let that be the way, but not my will, but yours be done. He prayed so hard, the Bible says, his sweat was like blood. But in the end, he was obedient. He was obedient to what God gave him, and he served God and man through what he did. You understand that if Jesus had not served God by going to the cross, then he would not have served man by making a way of salvation. We today would not have the opportunity to be saved if Jesus had not served in that way. But he served God because it was what he needed to do. He served God because God's way is always best. And as he served God, the way was created for us to have reconciliation with our Father in heaven. Jesus humbled himself and was obedient even to the point of going to the cross. Now listen. God didn't ask us to go to the cross. Jesus took care of that. But he asked us to serve. He asked us to be obedient. He asked us to humble ourselves. If we would do those things and follow him. Jesus obediently suffered for the whole world to see. Listen, Jesus could have given his life in a private setting that not everybody would have seen. He could have done that. He could have chosen to serve that way. But he didn't do that. He served in a way and suffered in a way that the whole world saw it. The whole world saw it. The whole world at that time was what we would say very small. Imagine that if at the moment of Jesus' crucifixion they could have broadcasted over the internet to the entire world. 
what a, what, how incredible that would be. But wait, we can do that today. It can be broadcast all over the whole world. We can let everybody know about Jesus. We can broadcast it across the street. Hey, neighbor, let me tell you. You know one of the ways we can do that? Serve. Neighbor needs some help? Serve. Go help them. And while you're helping, oh yeah, by the way, do you go to church anywhere? Let me tell you about Jesus. There's opportunities to do that. There's, in today's America, most people live in a house and they don't know any of the neighbors that live around them. Don't know who they are. And not only that, they don't want to know either. You stay over there, I'll stay over here. We put the fences up, stay on the other side. Don't come over here, I won't come over there. You stay away, I don't, I don't want to get to know you. Well, the problem with that is, what if you need some help or they need some help? You need something or they need something. We don't even know who they are. We're supposed to go and tell. We don't even know. Do they know Jesus? Are they going to church? Do they know any? Have they ever given their life to Christ? They're right here beside me. I've never served God by even going over and asking them if they are a believer or not. Never done that. For many of us, that's a reality in our own lives. For some, we know all our neighbors. We've invited them to church many times. We even know that some of them go to church. We know a lot about them. But what about the ones on the other side? <laughs> what about the ones in the other neighborhood? What about the people that you work with on a daily basis or those that you see out anywhere? Have you ever thought that they might need something? They might need you to help them, and through that you could share Jesus with them. What if you see someone in need and you stopped and helped? Would it be an opportunity to serve Jesus? Yes. be a great opportunity to serve Jesus. You know, one of the greatest things to me and I just, I love this, and it doesn't happen all the time, but one of the greatest things to me is if I had to go see a, a doctor or I have to go to the hospital for something, especially if I'm having some kind of surgery, and as I'm getting ready to have surgery, the doctor says, let me pray with you before the surgery. Hallelujah. Man, what a blessing. Can you imagine someone that didn't know Jesus? And the doctor said, listen, let me just pray with you before we do this. What, a, what an amazing thing that might do to that person to hear that out of a doctor's mouth, understanding that he's serving God through what he's doing, or she. They're serving God through what they're doing. For each one of us, we have such unique skills and opportunities on a daily basis. There are many opportunities that you have on a daily basis that I may never. There are opportunities that I may have that you may never. There are people that we may run into. Even today, we may run into someone. We may go out to eat and run into someone at the restaurant and have an opportunity to just share with them. What a, what a great opportunity that would be. I guess the question that I, I have for you today is, as we get ready to kind of close out is this. Are you willing to obediently serve God today that others might see Jesus. You see, his service was done in such a way the whole world would see. The whole world would see, and today we see that through the scriptures. We see that Jesus served in such a way that he served man by serving God, that he made a way for all of us to have reconciliation, and it wasn't hidden. It was done out in the open where everyone could see. Even today, we can still see that. You know, amazing thing, there, there are opportunities that you might have, and there are people that will tell and they will share, and all of a sudden, that one little thing that you did for somebody, today we'd say goes viral. People all over the place hear about that one little thing that you did. You know, that guy, he didn't have to do anything, but he stopped and helped me, and not only that, when he got ready to leave, he asked if he could pray for me, and I was just so touched by that. It can go so far. We've gone out visiting, knocking on doors, talking to people. People that would say, no, I don't, I don't go to church. No, I don't really want to go to church. I don't care anything about that. And you get ready to leave and you say, well, can I just pray for you today? Is there something in your life that I can pray for? And amazingly, many of them who've just told you they won't come to church and they don't believe will turn around and say, well, yeah, you can pray for me. I'm, this is going on in my life or this is going on in my family or this is happening. So yeah, if you'll pray for me before you leave, yeah. And then you have an opportunity to pray and you share with them. And maybe later that makes an impression on them. Maybe through that service, somehow they come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. But I can tell you this 
if you don't ever serve, you will not make a difference. Are you willing to serve God by serving people today? That's the question for you. The bigger question is, do you even know God? Because if you've never given your life to Him, you've never called Him Lord and Savior, then that service, you don't know what to do. You have no idea. It's not going to be anything that you can do. You can do what a, an earthly person can do, but it's not going to make that difference because it's not done with the love of God. So today, maybe that's the question. Do you know Him? And if you know Him, are you willing to serve Him? Think about that as we pray. Father, we come to you today and we thank you so much. God, I, I'm always, always just touched and always floored by the fact that you stepped out of heaven in all its glory and stepped down into this sinful, dirty world to become a man. You walked as a human being. You experienced the things that we experience. You experienced things worse than most of us have. Father, you experienced all those things, yet still you loved man. All mankind, Father, you loved, and you gave your life willingly in an act of service that people may have reconciliation with God. Father, that's the most incredible aspect of service that we could ever view. But God, you haven't asked us to go to the cross. What you have asked us to do is to serve you by serving man, to love you by loving people. Father, that we might walk in a way that would be pleasing to you, that others might see Jesus in us, that we might be willing to serve, Father, to get our hands dirty, to humble ourselves, to step down away from the high places. And, Father, to serve you in ways that make a real difference in this world. Father, perhaps there are those here today that say, that sounds great, but I don't really know this God that you're talking about. Father, I pray that today you would unveil their eyes that they might see you and they would come to know you as their Savior today. Father, in all these things that we've listed here today, help us to humble ourselves, to empty ourselves, to be filled with the Spirit, and to do exactly what you call us to do. We ask it in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen.